What's good? It's me, J. King, a.k.a. Coach OG. Shout out to all my OGs, OHG, O-Head Gang. Shout out to the IQ Ballers and the Clamp Camp. Yo, I'm actually here to not give y'all a build, but to talk to y'all about what build or how to create your first build uh, when 2K24 comes out or any 2K really. Just something to think about in future references when you're making your first build to try to minimize, you know, messing up, you know what I'm saying, uh, having a messed up first build or whatever. So we're going to get into that, man. First of all, let's get into some uh, non-tangible things right here. So first, what you want to do is you want to think about what type of player you are. And what I mean by that is, are you a scorer? Are you a passer, a playmaker? You know, you are you a big man type or you a defensive guy, you know what I'm saying? Think about what your mentality is naturally, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, for me, it was easier because I played basketball and I played basketball almost my entire life. So uh, I've always been into basketball. I know my identity. I've always known my identity. Uh, I know what type of player I wanted to be when I was younger uh, because I was a big Allen Iverson fan. But I also follow uh, a lot of playmaking type of uh, point guards, me being smaller. So... You know, I always looked up to people like Rod Strickland, uh, Jason Kidd, uh, even though Jason Kidd isn't that small, but he's a passer type. You know what I'm saying? I value playmaking more than anything. I was a big Magic Johnson fan as well. Don't get it twisted. I didn't grow up in the Magic Johnson era. I just grew up knowing the stories and looking at the highlights. I'm not that old, y'all. Don't do me like that. But that's the first and, first and foremost. You got to know what type of player you are. You know what I'm saying? Just figure out what's, what's your thing. What's your, which, what do you naturally cling to you know what i'm saying not what you naturally cling to like as far as uh what you want to do but what are you naturally good at what do you seem to be good at naturally all right then the second thing you want to do is your playing style which kind of ties into you know what kind of player you are but that that's like you know uh are you a ball handler or if you're not that big of a ball handler and you don't dribble very much and you're not doing a lot of dribble moves then you don't need to have that high of a ball handle like it's no need to have like if you were doing 2k23 it's no need to have a 99 ball handle and you're not even doing a lot of dribble moves you know what i'm saying that would be pointless it's a waste of points you're not doing that many dribble moves so those type of badges you don't need them like i don't use um ankle breaker granted ankle breaker sucks anyway but i don't use any i wouldn't really probably wouldn't really use it anyway uh killer combos don't use it i don't do a lot of combos i don't really i'm one of those three dribbles or less guys i don't need a combination you know what i'm saying i do the same thing in real life i i try to minimize my dribbling like you know what i'm saying i i'm trying to get you and three dribbles or less if i'm trying to score otherwise i'm more just keeping a good pace trying to look for my teammates so just know your playing style, you know what I'm saying? If you're not a big outside shooter and you're more of a slasher, then you might want a higher dunk and you don't need that high of a, a three ball. Just have enough three ball where you can make it when you can, just space the floor, but you want to have a higher dunk. So just knowing your playing style can feed into the attributes that you really want to exaggerate. All right, that goes into as well, another thing, knowing your strength, what's your strength? Like a lot of people, I notice that their strength isn't uh, as far as the game, their strength isn't shooting like they're not very good shooters so you might want to look towards something else that's more your strength you're a better defensive player so try to expound and exaggerate on what your strength is versus trying to be something you're not it goes back to you know knowing your identity and trying to you know what i'm saying stick to who you are you know what i'm saying so know your strengths um what do your squad needs you know what i'm saying like if you're running with a squad this is the granted a lot of people running with randoms you know what I'm saying? But for those who aren't one of the randoms, what's the what's your role on, the, on your squad? If you're if you're like for me, I'm the facilitator on my squad. I'm not the scorer. I can be a scorer, and in some games it might require me to be the scorer. So I always make sure I have some type of scoring ability because I might need to step up and be the scorer. Uh, but I'm not the scorer on my team. I'm not even the, the the second option as a scorer on my team. I'm the third option to score on my team. And sometimes, depending on the game, I might not even be that. But I'm the facilitator. I'm the main ball handler. I'm the guy that's setting up the plays. I'm a playmaker. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, as far as that goes, I make sure I make a build that allows me to succeed at the highest level in my role for my squad. You know what I'm saying? That way I can help them out as best as possible. You know what I'm saying? And then what's your goal for your player? Like, what is your goal? You know what I'm saying? That goes into everything kind of tied up in one. What is your goal? When you create a player, remember all those things. At the end of the day, it comes down to knowing what your goal is for your player. I want my player to be a very uh, high-volume shooter. So you want a high three ball. 
know what I'm saying? Oh, I want my player to be able to uh, be able to dunk on anybody. All right, you want to make sure you're getting all those elite contacts and stuff like that. All right, I want my, my player, for me personally, I want my player to uh, be able to pass at a very high rate uh, and, and get those passes quick and timely and, you know, in tight spots. You know what I'm saying? To be able to, you know, when my players are open, be able to hit them, you know, right where they need it. So I need an accurate pass, actually. So I'm looking for, I, I, that's why most of my point guards, if y'all have been following me since day one, you know, most of my point guards have uh, a 92 pass accuracy. Most of them have high, uh, uh, an, a 92 pass accuracy. You know, I might have an 86 uh, for those point guards that I create that are intended to be point guards. I'm not going any lower than 86, but most of them, if not all of them, actually are, are 92, including this one. This is my newest build. Um, I had a little extra VC, so I decided to make a build or whatever. And uh, this one even has 92 pass accuracy. 6'8", point guard, two, two-way two diamond, three-point shooter. I try to recreate uh, a modified version of my current gen version of the same build. But my goal was to be able to pass at a, a, a high high volume be able to make the wide open shots uh you know make my catching shoots maybe hit a couple of uh, moving shots and stuff like that uh so you know that was my goal but you know so to be able to score but my focus was being a, being able to be a, a effective a f facilitator so knowing your goal for your player is a big deal you know what i'm saying so let's go ahead and we're gonna go to the builder and let's talk about some other stuff so we're gonna make a point guards, right? Uh, we just, oh whatever, go with 99. All right, so we're gonna make my 6-8 again. So you see on the right side where you get these thresholds, that means it's the highest you can go. You know what I'm saying, with this height. All right, I wanted to go, I think I was 200 or 206 or something like that. My goal, the reason why it, the height was at it, what it was, or I want a max wingspan, and my weight was based off of me trying to get my strength at an 82 because that's at 82 you get silver bully so that was my goal i wanted to get that right there uh i think i actually went like this instead i think i because i don't think it was up that high so we're gonna go like that uh i think actually part of me also i was trying to get that eight oh you know what i didn't end up not going for the bully so i ended up trying to I just wanted an 80 acceleration. That's what I was trying to do. And I said I was going to get bronze bully. And I think I, I don't think I ended up doing that either. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, let's say we want bronze bully. We're going to start from the start. Bronze bully. I'm going to max out the wingspan. And it looked like everything else I, you know, I could possibly get and try to get. I wanted an 83 ball. Everything is good right here, right? You know, pay attention to that part as well. You know what I'm saying? But that, that comes with... Uh, knowing what animations you want to get so for example let's say I want to I want to be able to get at least uh, pro contact dunks you know what I'm saying if I want to get pro contact dunks I know the threshold is at an 84 so knowing that is a big deal so knowing that I, I, all right, I gotta have an 84 driving dunk and a 75 vertical to get pro contact dunks off one and off two but looking at it as well, you also got to think about the bag that you get. So, all right, what's going to make that dunking ability um, more effective? You know, I can go 85. Let's see, I got that bronze uh, posterizer. I don't know if that's good enough, but just going up one more gives me silver. But then if I go up one more, now I got gold takeoff. You know what I'm saying? It's think about those kind of things. You know what I'm saying? The reason I wanted the 83 three ball, look at what I get at 83 three ball. If I go to 80, If I go to 81... I get catch and shoot gold. I want catch and shoot gold. It's very effective. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be I'm playing mostly in the, uh, as a catch and shoot. Once again, knowing what my goal is for my player, knowing what my plan is and everything and my strength, make sure I go for those badges and animations that support my ability. So I want that gold, but like I said, I want to be able to be effective off the dribble a little bit too. So if I go one more, I get green machine and I get green machine on gold as well, which is a plus. But if I go one more again, I get Agent 3 as silver. And we've learned throughout this year that Agent 3 on silver is really good. So I'm going to jump down the ball handle now. Like I said, I'm a facilitator. So I got to be able to handle the ball. I'm a ball handler facilitator. But I don't need to be that fast. So I, I learned, you know, what 
baddest are effective and at what level by looking like 2K Toots and uh, 2K Labs and watching those, you know, I was able to know that, all right, gold is pretty effective. Of course, you're in the Hall of Fame, but I'm going to have to make a sacrifice somewhere. So, of course, if I go through all of them or whatever, I realize I'm going to have to make the sacrifice here and I'll just go with gold. So I get gold at 87. You know what I'm saying? Knowing the threshold, knowing the effectiveness of the, effectiveness of the badges, effectiveness of the attributes, so I know that I can get uh, past my guy with the 87 good enough to do what it is I'm trying to do. But that's also a compliment to my contact dunks. Because if I had a lower dunk, I might need to get past them so I can get more room. I might need to get past faster. So that 89, at 89, you get Hall of Fame quick first step. But if I had like a maybe 80 driving dunk, that would probably be more necessary. But because I do get a contact dunks, I just need to get a little bit of a step and I get that, that silver posterizer. I got gold uh, limitless takeoff. I have the ability to um, dunk further out and, and activate my animation further out. So that helps a lot. Like knowing those type of things, you know what I'm saying? Knowing what animations you want, like, all right, I, I'm trying to get this and that dunk. And the threshold for that dunk is you got to have at least an 80 or you got to have an 86 or you got to have a 90 or whatever. You know, knowing those type of animations. So know what animations that you want to get. Know the effectiveness of the attribute at that level. For example, my fat, a big example on the, the example for the effectiveness of blocks. What I learned at 75, a 75 block, most of y'all probably already know this already, you get gold chase down, right? But once I start putting my block up to 80, I was getting way more chase downs. I was like, oh, gold uh, chase down sucks. It doesn't. It's not useful. Put it up to put it up to 80 and see what happens. <laughs> I get a lot more, a lot more blocks now. A lot more chase downs. A lot more blocks in general at 80. But 2K Labs, I believe, put it out that it was a 2K2 to 2K Labs. Like I said, I look at both. They put it out that those uh, 10 point increments. So it's, it, it gets more effective at the 10 point mark. You know what I'm saying? I.e. Uh, from 70 to, to 80, it's, it's at the 80 that is the biggest difference. Or if you're going from 60 to 70, it's, it's at the 70, not 75, 77, at, at 70. I mean, not, not at uh, 65, 67. It will be at 70 where it's the most effective. It's that 10 point increment. So I started putting at 80. I actually did that before they said it, but it made so much more sense once they said it because I felt like I was getting way more blocks at that point. So, like I said, you got your required, required animations you're trying to get, um, the requirements for the animations and the animations you want to get, the effectiveness of the attributes that you're trying to get, uh, knowing which badges, and 2K did well with this, this uh, element here where you could look and see like, all right, if I wanted to get glove on gold, I need a 95 steel, all right? That, you know, all right, well, silver is pretty good, on gloves so I all I need is an 85 I'll just go for that but I gotta get clamp on at least silver right so what I gotta do as, as you can see right there it says I need an 86 perimeter defense so pay attention to what the, the uh, requirements are for the badges that you're trying to get as well you know once we find out you know after like the first week or so what badges are effective effective at what level then you can start really going for it so I wouldn't spend too much money on your first build till you start finding things out maybe do enough to stay competitive you know what i'm saying stay low everybody's gonna be low anyway you know what i'm saying you get a couple people people like myself who's probably gonna you know put it right up max it out off the gate uh but you know i would recommend most people not do that and just you know see fill out the game first and then spend more money once you realize or, or more vc once you realize like all right these are the attributes I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? That way you can maximize the ability of your of your character. You know what I'm saying? Like VC prices, I am not expecting them to be any lower. They're possibly going to be even higher. So making sure you're very effective with your VC is going to be very quenchial. You know what I'm saying? So I just figured I'd do this video to try to give y'all some type of mindset to have going into 2K24. That way you're not wasting a lot of money. Like me personally, because I'm doing these video stuff, I had had a lot of builds, but I kept noticing I was remaking the same build because I just kept feeling like I could make it better and I could make it better because I would learn new stuff. And then I started realizing if I had just paid attention to this in the beginning, or if I had known this in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? I would I wouldn't have spent so much VC. So I would 
I would not be so hasty on spinning your VC off the gate. Learn the game. You got plenty of time. You got an entire year. Take your time. You know what I'm saying? And let's ball out, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Shout out to all my OGs, OHG, OHEAD gang. Shout out to the IQ Ballers and the Clamp Camp. And y'all know what to do. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please hit that noti bell as well. And y'all know the motto. Don't be toxic. Let's ball.